So the Huawei Mate X3, the latest Galaxy Z Fold botherer to hit the UK, will set you back a rather tasty two grand, even more than the Pixel Fold. And frankly, if you've got that kind of spare cash kicking around, feel very free to send some to Techspert Towers. But the Mate X3 is a bit of a stunner, so let's stop banging on about it and just whip it out of the box, take you on a full tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Oh man, are my fingers actually this greasy? That's kind of disturbing. I haven't even had my breakfast KFC bargain bucket. So what do you actually get in the box besides the gorgeous Huawei Mate X3? So you do actually get a 66 watt Huawei charger bundled in there, Type-C USB cable, and Huawei has also kindly chucked in a condom case to help keep your Mate X3 safe from harm. Although its protective abilities are slightly limited as this is a foldable phone. So this thing will just about wrap around the back and that's about it. And what a back! Frankly, would you even want to obscure this thing with some sort of prophylactic case? It is a bit of a stunner, make no mistake. As is Huawei's design in general, to be fair. Two words for you, born a time. What you've got here is a very similar setup to Samsung's mighty Galaxy Z Fold phones. So you've got a whopping great cover screen which pretty much fills the front of the phone. And then pop it open and boom, you've got a near 8 inch internal display. The Mate X3 feels quite comfortable to clutch because it is quite a skinny device. And it's impressively slender as well for a bendy blower. I didn't even have much trouble wedging it inside of my rather skinny jeans yesterday. And the Huawei Mate X3 only weighs 239 grams, which yes, in smartphone terms is proper bloody heavy. But for a full-sized foldable, that's really, really good. This thing actually weighs a Nat's testicle less than the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And yeah, this phone certainly feels premium through and through, as you'd kind of hope when you're spunking out two grand on a device. That hinge feels very stable, certainly durable enough to put up with lots of folded and unfolded punishment. And yes, you do have the usual shiny internal screen protector, which is more obvious when you actually turn the device off. Pretty bad at picking up grubby, grimy, greasy fingerprints, but as we've determined already, I do have quite oily fingers, apparently. And yes, there is a quite obvious crease there as well, but nothing too terrible. Certainly no worse than any other rivals out there. You've got a very slender aluminium frame stretching around the circumference and then flip to the back. And what you've got around the arse end is a lovely vegan leather finish. There's a good bit of grip to the phone, especially handy when dealing with a mighty heavy handset like this. If that was a glass back, it would be very slippery when handling it. We've got just the one colour option here in the UK, this here sort of murky, mysterious green. I rather like it. I think it looks very smart indeed. Right down to that circular camera bump with its brushed metal finish. This does jut rather far from that arse, unfortunately, adding a bit of extra thickness to the phone. But good news, the Huawei Mate X3 does not rattle all about the place when you're using it on a desk or a table. Oh, and like Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold phones, this is IPX8 water resistant as well, so it can actually be fully submerged in water and hopefully not cack itself. So now on to the subject of software, which is always a bit of a sticky one when it comes to Huawei smartphones. As we are, of course, not running Android on this bad boy, it is a MUI version 13.1. And one immediate change that I've noticed on the Mate X3 compared with the P60 Pro, which I previously reviewed, is there's no app store. And seemingly no way of bringing back the app store either, which is kind of weird. So that means that, yes, sadly, just like those ruddy iPhones, you will be lumbered with all of your apps stuck there on the desktops. And speaking of apps, do not expect to find any Google ones on here because, yeah, they ain't supported. What you've got instead of the Play Store is the Huawei App Gallery. And this is certainly getting better, getting more and more good stuff on there every time I review a Huawei phone. But it is undeniably a lot more limited than Google's version. So when I'm looking for apps, I actually tend to rely on Petal Search instead. This allows you to search for basically any app you desire. So let's have a bit of a squid for Crunchyroll. And as you can see there, we've got the option of installing it via APK Pure. So most of the apps that you use on an everyday basis, you will be able to find via these APK services. Just be a bit more careful when you are downloading stuff. Make sure it is from a reputable source and gets good reviews. You can generally find about sort of 90% of the apps that I use on a daily basis this way. But unfortunately, if you are after Google stuff, well, you're going to have to use the web equivalent. So for instance, the web version of YouTube, which is perfectly usable, just not as good as an actual app. So yeah, Huawei smartphones still definitely limited when it comes to the software, but Huawei does 
tend to support its smartphones for a good length of time and especially a premium device like the Mate X3 should hopefully get a few years of support. Now you've got yourself a fingerprint sensor built into that edge mounted power button and this seems to work an absolute charm. Just tap your digit to that surface and as you can see there you're straight in. You've also got face unlock as a backup option if your fingers are even more well lubricated than mine. And as for storage you've got buckets of the stuff, 512 gigs crammed inside the Mate X3. And that is actually expandable as well via Huawei's proprietary, proprietary NMSD cards. So now let's chat display tech and we've got two of the buggers to cover so we better crack on. And let's begin with that 6.4 inch OLED external panel which as you can see there mostly fills the front, quite skinny bezels surrounding it. It's a full HD plus resolution and quite well suited to kick it back with some cinematic fare thanks to that elongated aspect ratio. Not quite as well suited to reading and checking out your photos and stuff, you'll definitely want to flip open to that internal display for all that shenanigans. But it is sharp, it is punchy, you've got black blacks and white whites thanks to the killer contrast. It's not quite as bright as I would have hoped unfortunately so watching murky affair when you're on the move does mean you kind of struggle to see what is going on at times. But it is LTPO tech though, it can scale all the way from 1Hz to 120Hz so great news if you want to slap an always on display on this bad boy. Perhaps just not one with such a sickly sweet mantra. There we go, that's better. Now whip it on open and you are greeted with a 7.85 inch internal display, once again an OLED panel. The resolution has been boosted to 2496 by 2224 to keep visuals nice and sharp. And yes, obviously the internal screen, not a great way to take in a movie, especially a cinematic 21 by 9 effort. But it is good for TV shows and more boxy fare. Also ideal for browsing your photo albums, reading websites, all that kind of good stuff. Seems to be a wee bit brighter than that internal display, nice wide viewing angles on it and only a dinky wee selfie orifice tucked away in one corner. But as I said before, you do have one of those glossy screen protectors slathered all over the top. And there is a crease which is fairly evident when you start to tilt that display away from your face. It's not LTPO tech at this time, although the screen refresh does still top off at 120Hz and there is a dynamic option to automatically scale it up and down. Of course one of the main reasons for getting an almighty foldable like this is the split screen capabilities. Just drag your finger from either edge, you'll pull out this little bar. You can then either tap an app in order to open it in a floating window like so. Or alternatively drag out that bar and then drag an app onto the display either the left or the right side and as you can see there it then opens in a split screen format. So you can get a bit of two way multitasking on the go. And if you really want to you can then open a third app in a floating window on top. A lot of things start to get a little bit cluttered at this point. You've got quite a few other features packed in here such as the Huawei Assistant or Great Mate Celia. Frankly I don't think I've got the stamina for her today. Lots more customization options and the super device shenanigans as well. Great news if you've got other Huawei gear. Now for the performance it is a Qualcomm chipset running the show. Sadly not the latest freshest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It is the 8 Plus Gen 1 from last year as recently stuffed inside of that glowy flashy nothing phone 2 and as the nothing phone 2 proved the 8 plus gen 1 is still a very capable chipset indeed as you'd expect it's only a few months old you can still absolutely blaze through any apple game out there although sadly no 5g support here on the huawei mate x3 it does top off at 4g now if you are a gamer well again that selection is a bit more limited here on the app gallery and quite a large chunk of this library seems to be frankly back mental but anyway i've scoured the app gallery for what seems like some of the best offerings Let's begin our game and test with Skibidi Toilet Game. So far seems to be a lot of adverts. That's a great start. Oh my god, I think this is going to give me nightmares. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that this is play. Oh no, more adverts. Hey, it's Twerk Battle. Excellent. Love that game. Sweet baby Jesus, what am I doing with my life? Okay, absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. There's creepy heads riding around on toilets. And I appear to have a CCTV camera for a face. Can I kick the heads? Oh god, he's coming after me. Oh Jesus. Oh god. What? Oh my god, he's driving these things. Well, frankly, that was so exciting, I needed a toilet trip myself. But let's crack on, in the interests of our sanity, with a bit of evil granny action. And frankly, I think it's spare pair of pants on standby. Oh god. Ah, normal, more brutal. Let's go brutal. Um, okay. I don't think the story is particularly important anyway. Oh, f me. All right. Locked 
find the key. What do you mean find the key? I'm in a tiny little bloody closet. Can't I just throw a grenade at the bastard? Hello? Can I lift up this skanky mattress or something? Oh god! <laughs> she just clipped through the door. Ah, go away! <laughs> Leave me alone! You're an evil granny. Ah, bollocks. Alright, last up. Grand City Theft or whatever the hell this thing's called. Oh, stop. Oh, you bastard. How do you get into cars? I can punch it. Oh, that didn't work. Stop. Ah! I'm going to nick a school bus. Oh, no, I'm not. I'll tell you what, these drivers are a lot smarter than the Grand Theft Auto ones. Dead. Yeah, it's not quite a Call of Duty, but whatever. Now, Huawei has managed to stuff a 4,800 milliamp hour capacity battery inside of the Mate X3, and that certainly seems to be doing the job. It lasted me all day yesterday, no worries, with lots of screen on time. Now, Snapdragon chipset's pretty energy efficient, as is the Emotion UI software as well. Definitely a good combo. Now, 66 watt wired charger means you're not exactly hanging around long when you do have to power this bad boy back up again. And you've got 50 watt wireless supercharging as well, as long as you've got a compatible charging pad. Let's finish up this Huawei Mate X3 unboxing with a squint at that camera tech. Just headed up here by a 50 meg ultra vision shooter. Although sadly without the very nifty variable aperture of the P60 Pro. You've got the usual fantastic selection of camera modes however, including that full on pro mode if you do want to mess around with the ISO level, shutter speed, the white balance etc etc. You've got portrait and night modes. And if you head on over to more tons of other stuff, including a high res mode if you want to shoot at full on 50 megs. Just using the regular auto mode, I found that the Huawei Mate X3 certainly captured some very slick looking shots, especially when the lighting was decent. Even in HDR style situations, the photos tend to come out pretty well. Not oversaturated, plenty of fine detail packed into those darker areas. And that shutter speed is certainly nice and nippy. And while the Mate X3 obviously doesn't perform quite as admirably as the excellent P60 Pro in softer light, it still holds up pretty good. As long as your subject isn't squirming about all over the place, that is. And you've always got that night mode which helps to produce brighter, poppier shots. As long as your subject is completely still. And you've also got yourself a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. It's a bit more basic, but it's pretty good if you want to cram lots more stuff into each frame. And the last lens here on the Huawei Mate X3 is a 12 meg periscope telephoto camera, which is certainly very handy for cropping into a far away subject while still getting some pretty crisp results. You can zoom in up to 50 times in total, although once you start to hit those maximum levels, then obviously, yes, things do get a bit soft and grainy. And if you like to shoot lots of video, well, you can capture some nice crisp 4K footage here on the Mate X3. No 8K option, but you can boost the frame rates up to 60 FPS. And of course, swap between the various different lenses as you're recording. And again, pretty happy with the results. The visuals are nice and sharp. The audio capture is fantastic as well. The Mate X3 doesn't seem perturbed by a bit of wind, any unexpected gusts. And the selfie shooter built into this external display is an 8 megapixel effort, exactly the same specs for the one in the internal screen. These are absolutely fine, although in lower light conditions, you do tend to lose some of that color accuracy and things start to look a little bit fuzzy. But of course, this is a foldable phone, so you don't need to rely on those selfie shooters for anything outside of Skype if you want to actually take a good looking snap of yourself. Just unfurl this bugger and use the actual proper rear camera. And you'll get a good looking shot pretty much every time with some obvious caveats. So there you have it, my lovelies. That in a delicious wee nutshell is the fresh new Huawei Mate X3, a very sexily designed foldable smartphone to take on the likes of the Galaxy Z Fold, as long as you don't mind the lack of googly action. But anyway, would you spunk out two grand on the Huawei Mate X3? Do you have two grand to spunk out on it? In which case, good for you. Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers!